Nose cones, the front of any rocket. Unfortunately, they're rarely cones, which is sad because cones are very easy to draw in your favorite CAD package. When you get a complex geometric shape such as the one shown here, it can be a little more of a challenge. Well, today we're going to discuss how to do this easily with a macro add-in that I've created for Fusion 360. So, stay tuned! <music> nose cones. Uh, what I'm showing here is a web page uh, on Wikipedia that talks about nose cone design and it's actually fairly good reference for a lot of different types of noses. Um, so it does start with some very simple ones like the conic and it provides a good description of what the uh, shapes are, why they are uh, used that way, and good uh, methods for drawing them mathematically. Now, mathematically is very good from a point of view of uh, understanding the theory behind the nose cones, but it's not so easy for drawing in a CAD package. So luckily for you, I've taken this math and converted that into some Python code that can draw our shapes. Now, there are a number of them in here. We're not going to draw all of them, but the ones I've done are the conic, which is shown here, uh, the uh, ogive, and the elliptical. Now these are all geometrically derived shapes. There is also the hack and a variant of the hack called the von Karman. Now the hack is mathematically derived and there are some uh, different versions of it. So for example, uh, the optimal nose cone for a given volume is the LV hack. Uh, the optimal nose cone for uh, a given drag is the LD hack and that is the von Karman and so on, okay? So there is a uh, coefficient that is used in the formula for generating this, and that will be important later. Okay, so let's look at how to install the macro. So you start by going to my website, davesrocketshop.com, and from the front page, there's an entry called Tools and Techniques. Select that. And if you scroll down a little bit, you will see a section for the Fusion 360 add-in for creating nose cones. Now I'm going to be rearranging this uh, shortly to be a more of a table view, so a little less description. and It'll make it easier to find. So it may look a little bit different by the time you get there. But for now, what you want to do is click on the zip file, and that will give you the option of downloading the zip file. I've already done that, so I'm going to select Cancel. Okay. Now, installing in Fusion 360 isn't a difficult process, but it's not entirely straightforward either. What it involves is uh, unzipping those files you just downloaded in a specific folder. So we look at the folder descriptions. It's actually a complex path. Uh, I'll include it in the link below, but just to describe it, the library, application support, Autodesk, Autodesk Fusion 360, API, add-ins, and then you have your zip file. Now you want to unzip this in place. Okay, so I just double clicked on it and on the Mac it unzipped. Uh, if you're doing this on a PC, you will have to right click and extract. Um, it won't run from within the zip file. You actually need to bring it out into the folder, okay? So if I look at what's inside there, you can see that there are a number of Python files. There is a resources folder that includes a number of icons. Um, yeah, they were generated by me. I am not a graphic designer, so uh, yeah, they look okay, but eh, you could probably do better. Okay, so that's the folder layout. Now let's bring up Fusion 360, and this takes some, a bit long for a video, so I'm going to uh, skip ahead. Now with Fusion 360 launched, we want to verify that everything is installed correctly. Now for add-ins, it's managed with this menu item here, add-ins. And there's an entry in there called scripts and add-ins. Select that. Now the add-ins are basically broken up into two categories. One is scripts. 
So an example of using a script would be a one-time uh, file. For example, when I uh, created my launch escape system, I used Python to generate the structures for that. I did that in FreeCAD, but the same principle applies here. So that would be your scripts. What we're doing with the nose cones is we're actually modifying the interface to include our nose cone generator. Okay, so this will become part of the product. Now, as you can see in the My Add-ins, uh, the nose cones aren't there. Okay, so I want to select the plus, and it will very, very slowly bring up a dialog. Okay, now in the add-ins, you can see the nose cones folder that we just extracted. I select it and then select open. Okay. So if I select it from the folder, you can see that it is set to run on startup. So next time I restart Fusion 360, it will launch it automatically. Right now it's it sees it, it knows it's there, it's not running. So I am going to select run. Okay, so what just happened? Well, basically we created an add-in for Fusion 360. Now, if I go to the sketch menu, you will see at the bottom, there is now an entry for the nose cone generator. Okay, so one of the things you might expect is when running this generator to generate the complete nose cone. That's not quite how this works. What this does is creates the sketch that you can then go in and use to create your, uh, your nose cone. So um, there are reasons for doing it that way. It's easy to create the components as you desire and customize it later and so on. So um, just as a word of caution, you do need a sketch. So if I select that right now, it tells you a sketch must be active in order to run the uh, command. So let's create a sketch. Okay, so I'm gonna select create sketch. Select one of the planes, it doesn't really matter which one at this point. Okay, so now from within the sketch, I'm going to rerun that nose cone generator. And it brings up this dialog. Now I'm going to do a very simple one first, just to give you a feel for how this works. And again, what we're doing here is we're creating a sketch of a nose cone that we can then complete and uh, create a usable nose cone. So I'm going to use the default values, which is going to create a simple cone. Okay, and you can see we got half of the outline of a cone uh, sitting on the axis. So if I stop the sketch, In the Create menu, select Revolve. And what we're going to do is we're going to spin that sketch around an axis. Okay. So when I did that, it selected the profile for me automatically. If it didn't, you can go ahead and select it. Now we want to select the axis that we're going to spin around. And we're going to spin around uh, this axis here. Okay. Select OK. And now we see that we have a solid cone with the dimensions specified in the, uh, in the macro. Okay, so let's examine this in more detail and see what all of our options are. So I'm just going to back step into our sketch. I'm going to run the macro again. So run our nose cone generator. Now the first option we have is nose type. And the one we just created was a cone using the default parameters of 60 millimeters in length and a radius of 10 millimeters. Okay, so this is radius, not diameter. That is important to remember. Now the default units here are millimeters, but you can specify other units as well. So for example, if I want this to be one inch, you can specify one inch. Now we've also set this to solid and no shoulder, and I'll come back to those in a moment. For now, let's go back to the nose types. Okay, so we do have some other shapes. The next in line is elliptical. Again, we specified the length and the radius, and it creates, in this case, a quarter of an ellipse, which we can then revolve and create a solid elliptical nose cone. Back step it again.
for the ogive, very similar, except we now have this new parameter called resolution. Now the ogive is uh, not a um, stock geometrical form within Fusion 360, but what we're doing is we're specifying some points along the curve and fitting it with a spline. And this parameter determines how many points are on that curve. Okay, so if I select this with the default value, we see we actually have n plus 1 because we have the endpoints as well. Okay. Two more shapes to cover. Okay, so the Von Karman, like I said, is a um, specific case of the hot, which has a coefficient of 0. So let's look at the hot first, and then uh, we'll do it that way. So we have the length, the radius, and the resolution, same as before. Now we have the coefficient entry. If we leave the coefficient at zero, this is a uh, optimized for drag hock nose cone, and uh, that's the same as a von Karman. Now I'm gonna show you a more interesting shape. And again, I got this value from Wikipedia of 1.3. And in this case, the diameter of the nose actually bulges out a little bit from the base before uh, transitioning to a, a tip. Okay, so that's a pretty interesting shape. What I'll do is I'll place a uh, Carmen sketch over top of this one. Okay, so let's do a Von Carmen. And again, this is just the same thing with a uh, coefficient of zero. And you can see we have a very different shape. Now, while you can superimpose these nose cone shapes on top of each other, when it goes to generating them, that's not really useful. So I'm going to back out. Okay. So let's look at some of the other options. Now, the first thing we did was we generated solid nose cones. Okay. Now, cones are nice, but let's give it a more interesting shape like an ellipse. Okay. So I don't want this particular nose cone to be solid. So I am going to deselect solid, and now we're presented with a thickness parameter. So that is the uh, thickness of the wall. As I go ahead and generate this ellipse, you can see we have a closed sketch that has both an inner and an outer wall. I'll stop the sketch, revolve it. Okay, so it selected our sketch and we select our axes, and we have our nice elliptical nose cone, and if we look around the backside, we can see that it is hollow inside. Okay, so let's back up and look at some of the other parameters. And again, we'll go with the ellipse. Now, let's keep the solid. Let's create a shoulder, okay? So now we have a length of 60 and a radius of 10. We're gonna create a 30 millimeter long shoulder with a radius of eight. Okay, so we'll stop that and revolve it. Okay, and here we have a nice solid nose cone with the desired shoulder. Now we can combine the two. So let's run our generator again. And again, we'll do the elliptical. Now this time we're gonna make it not solid and we're gonna give it a shoulder. Okay, so again, just using the default parameter. as we revolve that one. We now have a nice nose cone with shoulder completely hollow inside. Okay, now this can be done with any of the shapes, whether it's conical, ogive, or um, uh, the hacker von, von Karman. Okay, so this is generally the most desirable operation. Okay, 
So we have a nose cone, but it's not entirely complete. We're going to need, for example, some way of attaching a shock cord to this. And you can do any number of ways. You can, you know, tap a hole through here. You can plug the end and put a loop on there. But I'm going to show you a very good way for 3D printing. Okay. So I'm going to uh, discard this sketch. And we'll start from scratch.